Now the most common way that a lot of folks uh, fish for salmon, specifically king and coho salmon in the Pacific Northwest is they're going to use typically cannonball weights if they're not using downriggers. They're going to use a cannonball weight and then they're going to run that behind there. They're going to put some sort of flasher. Uh, there's this Pro Troll 360 flasher with the agitator fin is really popular as well as the old school rotating triangle flashers like this Big Owl flasher. Now it's pretty common knowledge that these two uh, flashers behave very differently. They create varying, varying amounts of drag, but I've always been curious as to how much uh, using these different dodgers impacts the depth at which I'm running. So today, using that little bright yellow data logger, I'm going to look at the impacts of these two different dodgers on depth uh, and also look at how speed impacts that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip in a 10 ounce weight and then I've got about a three foot uh, bumper there out to the dodgers and flashers from the weight, like I would typically run when I'm trolling for kings and coho. And I'm gonna run this at 1.5 miles per hour uh, with just the 10 ounce weight and two miles per hour with just the 10 ounce weight. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with this Pro Troll 11 inch and Big Al's uh, rotating triangle flasher here. I think this is the 8 inch. And we'll just see what the data logger shows us. Are we getting a lot more drag and lift out of these different dodgers or flashers? And how are they impacting our overall depth? It's just key to have this kind of information because sometimes, you know, especially uh, during outgoing tides, these uh, king salmon will hold really tight to the bottom, and being close to the bottom is really critical but you don't want to be sort of banging on the bottom and dragging and snagging all the time. So let's get started with this experiment. And then uh, once I finish collecting the data, I'm doing the data collection today on Lake Chelan because it's big, it's deep, it doesn't have a lot of current, there's no wind. Um, so it's really easy for me to control my speeds here. I'm gonna be using my Hummingbird Helix Fish Finder with GPS to give me my troll speeds. Like I said, I'm gonna try and average 1.5, average two. I am running 50 pound braid on my Shimano Dakota, which I checked was accurate to plus minus a few percent out to 100 feet. I'll take these out to 150 feet just to see. Um, I know that some kayak fishermen who don't have downriggers in Puget Sound will be interested in those more extreme lengths of line out. And I've seen in other uh, trials I've done like this, you know, sometimes the line drag itself can have a really profound effect on depth. So. Uh, let's get started with this experiment. So I got off the water and I downloaded all of the data off of the depth data logger and looked at just the 1.5 mile per hour speeds to start and it was really very, very interesting. Um, when you look at this data, you can see that pretty much the rotating Big Alice triangle flasher has almost no effect on your running depth. It almost runs at exactly the same depth that just a regular cannonball does. So it runs very true to the actual weight that it's running with. And in fact, when you get past 100 feet of line out, it actually, the, the rotating flasher and the weight actually run deeper than just the weight does. Um, it's not a very big difference, but what's really cool is just to see that they're very similar all the way out. And I actually made a, another video prior to this one where I made a chart that shows a, di a depth diving chart of a bunch of different weights at different speeds from 6 ounces up to 16 ounces. So if you want to download that, you can download that below or you can buy a sticker of it. I'll put links to both of those below. But interestingly, the big rotating Pro Troll 11 inch flasher uh, with the agitator fin on it um, actually runs quite a bit shallower, which is more what, what I was expecting. Um, in fact, it, out past about 40 feet of line out, it runs about 10 foot shallower than the weight alone. So if you're trolling at one and a half miles per hour with this and you use that chart that I have, um, 
you should essentially estimate that you're running 10 feet shallower than what that shows. Now, if we look at the two mile per hour chart, things look a little bit different, but not that much different. It surprised me. The, the triangle flasher, because uh, it's rotating just a bit faster, is trending a little bit shallower, usually two to four feet shallower than just the weight alone. But surprisingly, with the Pro Troll 11 inch flasher, um, it's still just running about 10, 11 feet shallower out past 40 feet of line out. So you can pretty much doesn't really matter what speed you're going at here. Um, it's just running about 10 feet shallower. So it makes it really easy to calculate your depths uh, when you're out there on the water. So it's really interesting results. Not exactly what I expected. I'm actually really shocked at how little of an impact the rotating triangle flasher has on depth. And that does actually help guide you if you're somebody who's trying to get to those more extreme depths, let's say you're trolling in Puget Sound, where a lot of times these kings will be running in 70, 100 feet deep or more, and you're trying to get down there with just using like a 16 ounce cannonball or something like that, um, you'd be much more likely to get into that strike range with the rotating triangle flasher than with a big rotating 11 inch uh, paddle flasher like the Pro Trolls. So they really do have substantially less drag and lift uh, impacts on your gear. Anyways, I hope this video helps you guys out in terms of determining your depth and picking the right flasher for your needs. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye.